Hi everybody, uh, welcome to my floss tube. I am Karen, this is KBH Stitches um, on floss tube and on Instagram. I don't know why I'm all verklempt again. I get so worked up about doing these, but we're just gonna go ahead and do it. This is floss tube number seven and somehow it's September 27th. Um, sampler September is coming to an end, which uh, is sad, but all the like spooky uh, stitching is on the horizon and I'm excited about that. Um, I just wanna say very, uh, very much, thank you so much for all the feedback about those finishes in my whip bin. So many great ideas about how to finish them. I have some tutorials to watch, um, but I things I had never thought about. Uh, finding an oval frame, instead of finding an oval frame, find a mirror, take out the glass, um, make things into project bags, flat folds. There's a ton of tutorials out there that um, I clearly need to watch. And so um, I haven't finished anything yet, but I am excited about the opportunities. Um, and I just appreciate all that feedback. It was so fun. It was so fun to think about those projects in different ways and um, just think about the possibilities um, that they have. So I did want to show you one thing that I did come up with. Um, I had said this Prairie Schooler piece, I was going to find a frame for it because I thought it looked more um, of like a frame shape when I actually held it up. But what I actually did was I found this little sled at the dollar, the dollar spot at Target. Is that what it's called? Anyway. And I am going to, it's going to be a perfect little fit. Oh, well, that's not great, but you get the idea. But it will fit. <laughs> Maybe don't get the idea. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it will fit like perfect here. And I can put a little bow up here and hang it at Christmas time. And then it's not very um, dense or heavy or anything to store during the off season as it were. So I do have one follow-up question. So talking about like this project, I went and bought foam core board, right? And I don't know, I don't think it's very thick, but this is the biggest problem that I have. And I have this with making my pillows too. I don't know how to cut straight. If I cut this with like a pair of scissors, just invariably by the thickness of it, it's gonna bend. So, and I have this problem even with like cutting fabrics and stuff. I have the rulers and I have the cutting board, but I guess I don't have the mathy part of the brain that makes that make all make sense. So if you have a trick of how I get this cut down so that I, I got the part about the, the uh, fleecing it, that's not it. You know what I mean. I can do that part. I can wrap it, I can do all that if I could get it cut to the right size. So if anybody has any tips and tricks about how to cut this, I would be very, very grateful. Um, I obviously looked for a size that would just fit it, but I, I couldn't find any. So I went with this. Is that wrong? I don't know. And I know, um, a lot of people use sticky board, whatever that is. From what I could tell, that's like poster board thickness. And even that, I'm like, how do you, how do you cut that straight? I don't know. So if you have any help, um, let me know. I did come up with, I have a bunch of these uh, Mill Hill ornaments. Um, my The pickle, which I love, and my Scotty, that's my Fergus. That's my Fergus, baby. And I found this, um, I'm sure everybody already knows this, but this is scrapbook paper, uh, scrapbook paper that is sticky. So I'm gonna just wham bam those on there and then cut it all out together. Is that right? Should I do that? Or should I cut this side out? Should I cut this first and then cut this? 
Should I cut this and cut this? Should I cut this, stick it to this, then cut this? Should I cut them both together? The cutting, guys, I'm scared of the cutting. Anyway, and the other thing that I found when I was, um, I remembered I had that sled. I bought that sled like a year ago. I bought this five years ago. Anyway, it's one of these little mugs. It's from um, something Texas, something, don't remember. Anyway, I had stitched two of, oh, nope, three of these cups from the housewives. So Crunch, Hello Fall, and Gobble, which I love that gobble. So again, if I can just figure out how to cut a thing, and then I bought um, the magnets and washers, I did all that, so that I can make this into like, it's not gonna rotate very much, it's gonna go from fall to spring, I don't have like a summer or a winter, but that's okay, I don't care. Um, but again, with the cutting, I don't know what to do about the cutting. So, anyway, no full, no finishes, no fully finished anything this week, but thank you so, so much. I feel so inspired. Um, I did, I got way sick last week. I got sick, I went down on Tuesday, my husband went down on Wednesday, my son went down on Thursday, they were both back up on Saturday. I kinda got back up yesterday. Uh, so it has been a week. So <clears throat> I have all these plans uh, that didn't quite come to fruition as every stitcher does, but so it goes. But I appreciate all that feedback. It was so fun and so great to think of things in just totally different ways. One thing, I'm gonna show you this project later again, cause I have to talk about it, but pumpkin thieves. So, so many people were like, make it into a wall hanging which I do think is a great idea, but then I don't have anywhere to put a wall hanging when it's not on the wall. And so I have a crazy idea, which is totally probably out of my skill set, but I think I'm gonna do it anyway. I think I'm gonna make a drum. It's gonna be a tall drum. It will be to like here, but wouldn't that be cool? So, I'm scared, but I think it would be, I think that would be cool. And then that would be an item that I can, like I can put that like on a bookshelf and not have to worry about it. And it would be nothing like that I have else. I, I, nothing else I have. <gasps> so, that's my big plan. Tell me if I'm crazy. I don't really know what making a drum means. <laughs> so, I may just be crazy, but that makes me really excited. So, and I love that piece, so I would like to do something with it. Okay, anyway, on to my whips. So, like I said, I was out of commission for a good week, um, but I have continued work on my 25-7. Not as much progress as I wanted. However, I'm on to the peacock which is part of the title, so that has to be important, right? So I am, so he's right here. He, they are right here. I'm right in this little corner. So what my plan is, is to continue to fill in the peacock's body, then fill in all this green. You gotta fill in the green if you go, <laughs> you gotta. And then pop down, this is gonna be the next page down here with this um pear. So I'm going to continue. This is an interesting one. It's like these different colors and they just go around and around and around and around. So I'm going to fill this in, fill all this in, then move down, do the tail. I don't know if the tail is in that. I don't know. This might go into a third page, so we'll see. Then I need to come over this way. And guys, <gasps> Curling Stones and Cross Stitches, who picked this up, picked up their whip of this project as their back to school project, and was, as far as I was, 
had maybe these four circles. It's almost all the way across. Go look at it. It's, it's astounding. It's amazing. And so many people, um, I've read about, started this for Baptist school, bought it, whatever. I don't know. It's kind of having a resurgence. And so it's really fun to see. So anyway, that's my 25-7. I'm keeping at it and I really like it. I still really like how it kind of sets my whole day. Granted, I I could not do it for a week. So uh, that was a bummer. But oh well. So then off to this was my bap oop. This was my back to school sal. Red stag among the roses from Modern Folk Embroidery. So that was my back to school sal and obviously a sampler September project. Um I again, I got sick so my progress kind of stalled out on this one. But I did get to this second plant. I'm going to show you here. Um, so I'm on this one right here. And I'm just going to keep, I'm treating it kind of like a band sampler. I'm just going to go all the way across, then do these all the way across. These. So like that. This is on 40 count, um, Rocky Mountain by XJU Design with uh, the called for DMC for the backside colors. So, and I love this fabric is gorgeous. It is really nice to stitch on. And I will say um, it's a 40 count. My eyes, I've been having trouble with my eyes. <laughs> um, I'm a little jumpy about eyes, but I've been having trouble with my eyes and this 40 count is really easy. It's that it's kind of has a white uh, kind of, it kind of glows in a way. I don't really know how to explain that, but um, it's an easier 40 count um, than the other ones I've been working on. All right, next up was, is my back to school, school two electric boogaloo. There's a ghost call. Goth, listen, I had no many, no idea how many people would even know what electric boogaloo break in any of it was. And uh, we found each other and I love that. I have had Believe in, my beat, Believe in the Beat like going off in my head. I've watched the trailer for the movie a million times. That was a really, really fun connection because why did I even say that out loud? But um <laughs> It was so great. The comments were so great. One, one comment was like, I never thought uh, I would hear the phrase, you know, electric boogaloo on a floss tube, but here we are. So I just, I loved it. Anyway, uh, my, on September 15th, now I was sick, but I got like a handful of stitches in. I started my second back to school project, which is Thurza goes golf, G golf, goth. Um, and this pattern is by Hemlock and Rye Stitchery. And uh, that the creator there is Julie from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado world. So Thurza is living in my Winterberry case. And... Here we are. Um, I am doing this on a piece of 40 count moccasin from Fortnite Fabrics. And I was able to find all the called for, except for this um, gray right here was supposed to be DMC 03 and I had to buy 04. So it's just a little bit darker, but I'm loving these colors. They're not showing up great in here, I'm sorry. They're really, um, they like almost glow. Um, again, this is, these are all the called for DMCs for the goth conversion. So Julie originally did a front side conversion of the actual um, sampler. 
She also did a backside for the um, probably more true to the colors as they actually were, unfaded, that sort of thing. And then for this conversion, she just took colors that she liked and plugged them in where she wanted. So it's not a one-for-one -one conversion, but it's a very cool idea that um, I said a lot of words about last time and I'm not sure it made sense, but I find it really um, exciting and fun when people take on new, I don't know, new ways of looking at things. Okay, so that was my Thursday Goes Goth. That was my second back to school, also a sampler September. And then um, it was odd. A few days before I got sick, I was just kind of uh, was having some sad days. And so I had come up to my craft room to kind of look at these. I had so many ideas about these finishes and I took out um, those and I was looking and I found the sled and blah, blah, blah. And then I was looking through my stash just to kind of, you know, uplift or whatever. And I came across this pattern that I totally forgot I even had. And it just felt like I should start it. So this is by Kathy Barrick and it's called Courage, Dear Heart. And I don't know, it just felt like I needed to see it that day and it came to me. So I just did a little start on it. This is a scrap of 36 count light mocha, I think. Um, and like all Kathy Barracks, they're NPI, it calls for NPIs. I'm just using DMCs. And I'm also, this picture is very hard to see, but there's blue in the dresses is the same blue as these birds is the same blue as these hands. So I picked a purple to put into the dresses just to give it a little bit more um, contrast there. So, so that was a new start, um, which is now what? Okay. Um, so this is going to be kind of a short video. Um, so the next part is stash. Uh, however, all of my stash this time is for my plans as well. So it's going to be stash, plans, all of the above. So um, October 1st is witchy stitcher day uh witchy stitcher is a cross stitch designer who is facing um some health issues and so this witchy stitcher day hashtag has been started for october 1st to um help help her buy her charts um you know promote her charts uh she has a website that you can buy from directly uh, by PDF downloads. And um, <clears throat> so I went ahead and I bought this Halloween pattern. Number one, to support her. And then I'm going to start it on October 1st and also just kind of promote the name promote the hashtag, just try and help somebody out when they really, really need it. And so the kind of second part of this is that my myself, um, Petals and Pins on Instagram, Christina, and Wanda, Wanda Stitchy Kitchen on Instagram, we have for the last few years, I think we skipped a year or two in there, I don't really know, but we have always done um, a kind of Halloween start on October 1st. And so we got back together and said, like, we, we kind of wanted to do this again, not let the year slip by. Uh, we tend to do projects with black cats in them. And so this is going to be um, our project for this year. And we do just very simple. It's the black cat cell, hashtag black cat cell. 
So if you want to join us, you can join us on this project. You can, Witchy Stitcher has other projects with black cats. There are 8 million projects with black cats. So if you want to join uh, myself, Christina, and Wanda with a, in the black cat cell, um, go ahead and pick any project you can. If you would like to support the Witchy Stitcher, I know that um, it would really be important. So, so for right now, um, I'm going to show you. So it was very fun. What I'm going to do, I have this piece. It's, um, this is 22 Count Ada, which I believe is actually called like Hardinger fabric. Um, but it makes for a real teeny finish. And what I decided to do, I had thought about coffee tea dyeing the fabric, but what I'm gonna do instead, I'm going to stitch on the white. Here's the colors, look how fun. All these turquoises. Again, these are the called for DMCs. The pattern calls for a toile, which would be amazing. But because of what I'm planning to do, I didn't want to use the etoile because I just didn't know how it would work. But so these are the colors. I'm going to print it on the white. And then I bought, and I should have gotten it down, but I didn't, this antiquing spray that you spray onto your project. And so I'm going to spray it on after, after I'm done stitching. So that it kind of looks like something that was new that's gotten grungy and old. So, and I want it, I want it to go on the fabric, I want it to go on the stitches, all of that. And that's why I worried about the etoile. I worried about the spray drying on those metallic pieces. So anyway, I'm not doing the etoile. I'm gonna stitch on this and then my hope is to age it afterwards. So. There is my hashtag witchy stitcher day Sal to support her and them, sorry, and my black cat Sal start for um, the Sal with Christina and Wanda. And so speaking of that Sal, um, this was the first project that we did and we called it Pumpkin Thieves Sal. This is a, again, this is a pattern by Madame Chantilly. So this was the first project that we ever did together. The next year we did MC Black Cat Sal, because this is a Madame Chantilly design called Black Cat. And I finished that one as this fun pillow. So as you can see, any of these could be used in this year's Black Cat Sal. <laughs> we have a black cat. We had black cats. Last year was Halloween on the Farm Sal, which is this Kathy Barrett design. Halloween on the Farm Sal. Also could be used for Black Cat Sal. And then this year, um, I'll show you. I just have a little progress on this. I should use this as well this year because this is such a cute little project. I just got to get going on it. But I'm on the black cat, so black cat's how. So you get the idea. Um, feel free to uh, join us with the design we're picking this year. Feel free to join us with any of the designs we picked over the last year's or any black cat design. So for me, I have quite a few of those. So I thought that I would um, share a few of my other black cat whips in case anybody's looking for some inspiration and wants to join us on October 1st for the black cat sale. Uh, just a reminder, I got this wonderful bag from Stonehouse Stitching and that's where I'm going to keep my... Uh, Witchy Stitcher, Witchy Stitcher Day Sal and my Black Cat Sal. 
And then I also picked up, because we're on haul, I picked this up at uh, Michael's. I love it. I love it. My son and I collect um, nutcrackers at Christmas time, so this is probably a bad thing to start to have them for every holiday. But if anybody knows of a turkey one, let me know, please. Would die. So anyway, so, and I thought this would be fun to put with all my um, black cat finishes. So anyway, um, this is another black cat bag. Oh, I know what I'm doing with this. Okay. This, uh, Christina Petals and Pins, <coughs> who I'm doing this out with, is also quilting with Nico. Quilting with Nico. She makes all these beautiful bags. And so she made this bag for us um, before we started the MC Black Cat Sal. And it's so cute, I love it. And anyway, because it's a black cat bag, one of my black cat projects is in it. This is a Mirabilia called Witching Hour. And this one came out a few years ago and I, I just don't see very many people stitching it, including me, but black cat. Um, I'm doing this on 32 count, I think just natural linen, but I did start and it's, the colors aren't showing, but it's very pretty. So that would be an option for a black cat sal. If you would like to participate in Sarah's sal of Stitch Smalls from PNPS, there are quite a few um, designs with black cats, but the next one that I plan on doing is this cute little pattern, oops, from Liz Matthews. Is boo. Sorry. Try not to show the pattern. So you have the black cats there. This is the next one I'm planning to do. And it's a small one and it's just DMC. So I'm hoping maybe, you know, finish my witchy stitcher black cat. Do this black cat. I have all sorts of plans for black cats, guys. We'll see where I get. But so this would cover you Black Cat Sal, Stitch Smalls from PNPS, which is Sarah, Sarah's Stitchy Spot. Um, a good fun hashtag to have, uh, to have some smalls at the ready to share with family and friends and the like. This is an old, an old, I don't know why I said that. Well, I think because it's old. Birds of a Feather Pattern. It's called Fat Cat. Um, poor guy, his stomach is full of too many treats. But he's a black cat. I would never get this one done in October, but I wouldn't mind doing some work on him. That's a fun piece. I would love to get down to this. Um, these electric kind of colors are really fun. Let's see if I can... Again, it's just DMC. It's not just anything, goodness. But look at these glowy. That will be fun. Um, and then this was the last black cat I pulled out because I would really love to get this one done. He has a lot more stitches, but I, I just, the face on this. This is Teresa Kogut, a snarky cat. And I just love, uh, this is 40 count straw. Look at him. Uh, uh, this one. I think what I'm gonna do is do my witchy stitcher on the first, work on that. And then this is gonna be in second place. Cause I've started the big pumpkin. I've done all of him and all this, 
I've started the Babe Pumpkin and I haven't made a decision yet on this. I think I'll do it because I really do like it. It's just a lot of stitches. So I think in terms of Black Cat Sal, this will be my electric boogaloo. So I need to leave that one out before I forget so I don't forget. So I don't forget that one. So anyway, those were just a few of my Black Cat uh, projects. So again, October 1st, first and foremost, is Witchy Stitcher Day. Anything you can do to support, promote, send good energy, anything you can do, uh, that's first and foremost. Second, please, please uh, join myself, Christina, and Wanda for the Black Cat Sal in any way you want to. We start on the first, we never end. There are no rules, just tag us. We love black cats, honestly. <laughs> we all have um, black kitties and we just love black cats. And so show us all your whips because we'll end up buying them all. And that's always fun. <laughs> that's always fun too. Okay, and that brings me to um, my last bit of haul here. Um, today's Wednesday. Two weeks from today, I will be going back to Utah. Um, it's been eight weeks, which on one hand feels like an eternity and one hand feels like a day. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm having a very hard time with it. Um, we started this all mid-November last year. And so we are coming in on a year of going through this and it's very hard when there's no structure to it. We just keep going and hoping. There's no kind of end in sight. There's no... Anyway, it's a little bit hard and it's taking a toll on myself mentally, my son mentally, my husband mentally, our family financially. It's very hard. It's a very hard thing. This country... Uh, could figure out a better way to do medical stuff. Um, and I find myself realizing that I'm going to be in a position where I have to make medical decisions for my child based on unmedical criteria. And that's very hard for me. My dad is a doctor. My mother is a nurse. I believe very much in the goodness of people who do medicine. And it just doesn't correlate with the business that runs your access. And so anyway, I'm having a bit of a hard time and I thought I um I started thinking about what can we do fun on the Thursday? What can we do just to make the trip a little bit more manageable? We come back and it's my son's 15th birthday like the next day and so that will kind of help pull us through. So anyway, I was scrolling the Instagram and um whoops this design came up by golly this is from Ellen Reed at Maximum Cross Stitch her if you don't know <laughs> Maximum Cross Stitch Power that is blowing out really really bad but I don't even care because oh my god if the parrots glue were like that I would die and so I thought that's it I am going to start that project and take it with me as kind of my anchor so and the thing about it is is that like clearly birds are having a moment in cross stitch it just seems like there are so many reproductions of birds going on i stitched this this is called pretty polly it's a freebie from hands across the sea i stitched this i loved every stitch of it and it makes a beautiful piece i then went ahead and stitched oh sorry i went ahead and stitched this this is from 
I can't remember, but it's just one part of a sampler, a big sampler. It's just one little part. And so what I decided was I bought this pattern. Um, again, here's the pattern. I bought it from Ellen Reed's uh, website for a PD PDF download. You can also go to Evertote um, and you can buy hard copies. You can buy, it is all stitched in Roxy Floss Co. Floss. You can buy the floss. You can buy like a chart floss combo. I, for time's sake, um, went ahead and just purchased the DMCs which I think are lovely. I've started doing this with almost every pattern now. It's really nice to just have that right accessible. Um, anyway, really fun colors. And I had in my stash this piece of 36 count It doesn't have a color on it. Oh, brown sand. It was on the back. Sorry. So this is XJU Designs, which I'm loving stitching my red stag on. And this is like, it's like a gorgeous gray. Oh, isn't that pretty? I have my pretty Polly. So... My plan is to start this on Wednesday, October 11th. We leave on the Thursday. I'm going to start this on the 11th and take it with me. And I'm going to hashtag this pretty bird, Sal. And my hope is you all, you all are always so wonderful when we go to Utah and you send prayers and you send good thoughts to my son and I will never be able to say how grateful I am. Um, and so I'm just kind of putting it out there. I'm going to start this. I'm going to use Pretty Bird Sal. So if you are stitching on any sort of pattern with a bird, hashtag it Pretty Bird Sal. And for those moments when I can't quite get my brain around um, stitching or I'm having a hard time, I'll look and be able to see all your beautiful projects and get ideas and um, just enjoy that um, process. So, like I said, this is, oh, I'm sorry. Did I even say it's called Edie and Patsy? Sorry, I'm all over the place today. I apologize. But I also thought I would show you um, some other pretty bird patterns that I have. Oops, sorry. Um, I, this is another pattern from, that I bought from Etsy as a PDF download. This is by Quaint Rose Needle Arts, and it is called Mary Amelia's Bird. And it's just a chunky little bird. So I bought that pattern. And when I get to it, it will be a pretty bird sal. Um, and then I bought this, uh, again, Sarah from Sarah's Stitchy Spot was stitching this. And it is called Strawberry Bird. It's by the Blue Flower. And I just love, I love all the white space in it. So I haven't found the perfect fabric for it yet. Um, it's charted in DMC and I'll stitch it in DMC. Oh, it's charted with DMC and then a few, just three of the colors are um, over dyes, but I'll probably just use DMC. But I want to find a nice fabric for that because it's just so important kind of to the design. But once I start that, It'll be a pretty bird sal. So, um, pretty bird sal, it's just kind of like, it's kind of like black sal, cat sal. Use it for now and forever on whatever piece you want. Um, but I would love to see them because 
birds are having a moment and I am having a moment with them. And so I'm really excited to start this and kind of have it be my um, touchstone as we go uh, to Utah. And I think it's going to be a really beautiful project. So I think that's everything. I'm going to continue to work on my 24-7. I'm going to celebrate on October 1st, Witchy Stitcher Day and Black Cat Sal. And on October 11th, Pretty Bird Sal. I, again, I'm planning on doing some of those finishing, but I don't think it's going to happen right now. Uh, as we gear up for Utah, it's kind of hard for me to uh, concentrate on those small details. But if you have a trick to cutting sticky board, card board, foam core board, straight, please let me know. <laughs> That's my biggest fear right now. I, the rest of it I can do. I just cannot cut things straight. I invariably go off, you know, whatever way. So if you have any advice, do let me know. I'm going to show you Mr. Fergus has been sitting here so quietly because he had a haircut. He got a haircut. And when he comes back from the haircut, he has such big eyebrows. Look at your big eyebrows. Yes. So there he is. He's a good, good, good buddy. So anyway, I'm going to let him go because he hates it when I do that. <laughs> but he does sit here with me. He's such a good buddy. So anyway, I've rambled. I don't even know what I said this time, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, that's all I've got. So please take care of yourself and enjoy these this kind of change into the end of the year of 2023. I don't know how that happened. I don't think any of us know how it happened. But here we are. And um, I hope to see uh, some of your whips. I, it would it brings me very great joy. And um, if you have any questions, please do ask. I love the comments. I truly, truly do. And if we come back here, we'll do it again. All right. Bye-bye. Really? <laughs>